being your own advocate when it comes to insuring a commercial fleet or driver? What would be some of your insights? Or if you could tell a fleet and give them some kind of tips and tricks and pointers, what would be some advice you would give? Yeah, that's a that's a good one. And I think from what I see anyways, uh, the industry is still catching up. And when I say the industry, I mean uh, the commercial transportation industry. Uh, unless you're a very large fleet uh, who is extremely tuned into your insurance and the things that you need to track and how safety affects the risk and premiums and deductibles and all of that type of stuff. Most fleets, uh, which are less than 20 units uh, here in the United States, don't really have a handle on what insurance carriers are going to be looking at when it comes time to rating them uh, as far as a risk perspective goes. And so, you know, when they uh, choose a carrier or the the carriers that they have access to is 100% based on all of the data that surrounds how that fleet operates every day. So if you think about things like telematics and motor vehicle reports and motor vehicle report monitoring, all of the FMCSA data uh, that's out there, uh, claims history, um, hiring habits, all those safety programs that they may or may not have in place, you know, all that stuff matters. And, you know, if, if I were sitting in any fleet's shoes, whether it's trucking, whether it's final mile, whether it's construction, you know, whether it's a private company that has their own vehicles, uh, you know, the thing I would be focused on is how do I, number one, understand what my data is that will be looked at by the insurance community. Uh, and number two, how do I get a hold of that? So that once I understand what it is, I can now start to put things in place that will um, help my data picture uh, look and feel the way that the insurance community needs it to. And that's not just the game, like that's reality. And the reality is the more that you do that, uh, the more that you reduce your risk and the better chances that you have of getting yourself secured with a better carrier, with better premiums, better deductibles. Uh, so, you know, again, if I were sitting in the seat of a fleet, any kind of commercial fleet, I would be very curious to understand what all my data means and really truly understand how is the insurance community going to look at that stuff. And then on the flip side, if I was a producer and I was somebody working with fleets, if I were trying to be my own advocate from that perspective to show that I'm doing more than just selling insurance, uh, I would be very focused on helping fleets understand what we just talked about that the fleet should be paying attention to. Because in my opinion, a good producer is going to focus on how they bring value to that fleet and how they really truly understand uh, or help the fleet understand, I should say, how does their insurance work? And what things should they be focused on? Um, you know, the ones that uh, are just out there to sell an insurance policy and collect their commission and move on and go do it again and again and again. Not that that's not part of a good producer's uh, philosophy as well, but a good producer is going to help a fleet understand what is it that you need to know about how you become a better risk for the insurance companies. So those would be my two bits of advice for both a fleet and a producer on how do you become a good advocate for uh, for yourself. Right. And I think becoming a good advocate is about being proactive and not reactive, no matter what side you're on. Right. I think that's a good philosophy to take no matter where you're at in life, what it is you're doing. But um, yeah, so I think that's the common theme is uh, you got to do some of the work, too. Right. If you don't do the work to know. Well, then what's going to happen? So, well, okay. you know, it's uh, that's that's true. Right. It's uh you hear me say it all the time, right? You got to do the work. Uh, yeah. And so it's not just about, it's not just about understanding what the, the work is, but then digging in and actually doing the work. And I think until you know what that means, people are lost. You know, they have no right. idea what insurers are looking at and they should. Well, and I do want to ask, so a, a lot of people ask, oh, okay, what's the return on investment on doing these things? Or what, what is the benefit if I, implement a safety program or if I'm doing all these right things, like everyone wants to know right away, what is, what is my return on investment for these things? But I think it comes down to, I mean, you're not really going to know until something happens. And then it's like one of those situations where at that point it's too late to wish you were, were doing all those things. Right. 
So um, maybe talk a little bit about that and how do how do producers get fleets and get insured to see the value in these things? Because at the end of the day, they're just trying to save a buck, right? So sometimes it's, well, I don't want to pay a couple thousand dollars to install cameras or do these reportings because I don't, I, that's a waste of money. So how do we change that mindset? Yeah, that's a, that's, we hear that one all the time. Um, focus on return on investment. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and, and, and when it comes to these things that we're talking about today and telling your data story and understanding how to be your own advocate, it's, it's a tough one to say, oh, you're going to see a 10% return within the next 120 days. Cause that's just not the way it works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so let's say that you're a newer fleet and your data is not very um, deep, right? Because you just don't have a lot of data yet. Well, you're going to fall into a certain class at that point anyways, and insurers are going to look at you a certain way, uh, no matter what, because you don't have a lot of data. And so there's a bigger risk when you don't have any data. And so if you think about the insurance cycle in general, traditionally insurers are going to look back three years to see what have you been doing? Where, how have you been operating? What are your losses? What has your risk been? What have you cost other insurers? And then they're going to start to make decisions on your data and lining that up against that. So if you think about return on investment, in my mind, and I've heard this from some producers as well, um, it's a three-year process, right? So mm -hmm. year one, it's about implementation and starting to collect the data. Year two, it's about really understanding the data and starting to make proactive moves that start to set you up for year three, which is when by the time you get to the end of year three, your company should be in a very good position. You should have the pick of the best carriers out there. You should be getting aggressive premiums. You should be getting good options with deductible, deductibles or retentions, you know, depending on how big your fleet is. So, you know, if if there's any bit of advice I could give on return on investment, I would say you're in it, you gotta be in it for the long haul. If if you're expecting to get a return on your investment in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, it's just not the way this works. You know, mm -hmm. have to think about this. It's not, it's not about if I do A, I get B. This is about shifting a culture in a business. And when you shift a culture in a business, it's a lot different than saying, where's my kickback for the work that I just did. It's about shifting, it's about shifting what the business does. Uh, but when you get to that year three point, if you've been doing all the right things, good things come. And I've seen amazing things happen with some of our producer partners, some of our cover holder and 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 program manager partners where they really reward fleets that are doing these things. And they should because their losses are going to be low and their risk is in a good space. So yeah, be ready. It's a, it's, it's a long haul. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm 